Let's learn how to test and fix bugs in our vibe coded apps using test sprite. In my video where I went in depth on how to vibe code an app from start to finish, I used this app called Dream Saver. And inside that video, we ran into a lot of different problems. Sometimes there were things like contrast problems on the landing page. Sometimes things just didn't work properly. And it's kind of difficult to go back and forth and try to get the AI to do what you want it to do in order to create whatever app you're trying to create. Well, a PRD or projects requirement document does help with this problem. It isn't a panacea for all of the potential issues that you can come up with. A good idea to alleviate or at least to see potential problems is to create tests. Tests like functional tests or integration tests can be a surefire way to make sure that your product works the way that you want it to. Any potential features added to the project will have have to pass these tests in order for them to actually work. Now, writing manual tests for your application can be a lot of work. So why can't we just use AI to do it? Well, the problem is the same problem that we have when we're creating the application that AI is going to probably get things wrong. So that's where a framework like TestSprite comes in. This framework works alongside your AI model and gives you tests and fixes and delivers on potential issues that you can have inside of your application. It understands what you want by instantly parsing your PRD and inferring what potential features that you're trying to get at and then creating tests on top of those features to test inside of your project. With this, not only will it start fixing bugs, but it will also give you implementation ideas for features that you can add to your application. You don't just have to add this to your vibe coded apps, but anytime that you are using a model to write any particular set of code, or if you just have a code base and you want to write tests for it, you can use test sprite to do exactly that. To get started, it's really easy. Just go into the description and click on the test sprite link. It is an affiliate link, so it does help out the channel. And then from there, you'll want to go through the signup process to create an account. Once you sign in, you'll be brought to the dashboard and you'll be on the free plan, but if you want to upgrade and try at least one month for free, you can go to manage plan down here in the left and click on the starter edition. You'll get one month free and then you can start testing it out with a lot more credits. So you get a lot more tests out of it. Now, once you're in the dashboard, all we have to do to get started is click on try test sprite MCP. And if you're using cursor like me, go ahead and click on the quick install button. It takes you to the MCP page. And from here, we can click on install now. Now, like this says, all we need is a compatible ID. IDE, basically one that can use an MCP server, and I'll explain that in a bit. And we need a test sprite account as well as an API key from that account. Then if you're using cursor like me, just click on this add to cursor button. You'll get a pop-up and you'll just need to click on open cursor. Now inside cursor, it opens up your settings and under settings, it goes to tools and integrations. And inside of here, we have this MCP tools, and this is what we're going to add. So we named it test sprite. That's just what it came with. And then the command is the MPX command at test sprite forward slash test sprite dash MCP at latest. The last thing that we need to do is we need to add our API key. Now, where do we get this? Well, it's it's really simple. Back at our dashboard, if we go over to the left and scroll down, we can find the API keys tab. From here, all we gotta do is click on new API key. Next, just give it a name. I'm naming mine tutorial and then hit create. Now you'll get this key and you won't be able to see this ever again. So once you copy this, you want to paste it into cursor and make sure that you have it there because you can't access this again. You'll need to just delete this key and then create a new one if you ever lose this key or you accidentally leak it. Also, don't worry, I'll be deleting this key after this video, so you won't be able to use this one. Now back in cursor, we just paste that key next to this API key equals, and then we can hit install. So let me quickly explain what an MCP server is. MCP stands for model context protocol, but honestly, you don't really need to know about the inner workings of what it means. Essentially, what it means is we code certain tools and those tools can be used by agents. So I might write a specific tool that grabs weather data from weather.com. Well, then if I prompt my agent to ask it, hey, what's the weather like in San Francisco, California? It would then reason and understand that it needs to use that tool that I created to get the weather data in order to get the right information for its response. So the same thing is happening here. If I expand this, we can see all of the tools that Test Sprite has now installed that the agent can use. Look, one of them is generate code and execute. So we know that it's probably going to be generating some sort of test cases and then executing them. The agents are smart enough to understand when and where they need to use these particular tools that they have available to them. One thing I wanna point out is that Test Sprite works the best when it has a PRD available to it. If you already have one in your code base, it will actually search for it and then use it 
sit inside of its inference and trying to figure out what features need to be tested inside of the application. For the Dreamsaver app that we're gonna create tests from, we have already created a PRD documentation, but we did that using vibecode docs.dev. So if you're curious, I would go here to create your PRD and then add it to your project. It's a great way to both get started with a project as well as any pre-existing project to add some documentation to it. Of course, you could just ask an agent to create a PRD for you, but this goes through a whole questionnaire process and makes it a lot easier as well as puts all of the documentation together. If you wanna try it out right now, you can go to vibecodedocs.dev and you get your first generation for free. So your first PRD is for free. Once you've generated the whole PRD, it's really simple to start using Test Sprite. All we need to do is say the magic words. We just say, help me test this project with Test Sprite. And you can use any model that has reasoning that can do agentic tasks. So right now I'm gonna use GPT-5 because it's new and why not use it? So in cursor, I'll type this in for the chat, hit enter and see what the results are. Now, if it's your first time running this, the AI agent will open up a web page on your local host for you to fill out all of your testing information. So here we can test out whether we want to test front end or backend, if we want to test the whole code base or a code diff, like just a particular set of code, and then all of our information about our testing account. So if you have an authentication on your project, you'll want to put your test account username and password so that it can automatically get into whatever product you're using. You also do need to have the application running. So if you don't have it running already, you'll need to run your NPM run dev or something like that in order to run it locally. And also you'll need to grab the port of wherever you're running it and paste it here. Lastly, instead of test sprite, you know, manually trying to find your PRD, what you can do is just upload the product specification document. And that's what I'll do. I'll click on this button and I'll traverse to my project and I'll click on dream saver, all documentation, and I'll hit open. Now, once we're finished, we can hit continue. And it tells us our upload is successful and the page will close automatically. So now back in the agent, it's still running, still trying to figure out what tests to create and what tools to use from the MCP server. And so I'll let you know once we get to a stopping point. So the agent finished and it asked me to review the test sprite MCP test report MD and confirm if he wants, I can fix the login flow navigation so we can rerun the tests. Well, let me first check out the test sprite dashboard. So on the dashboard, we have a couple recent created tests. Now also I do wanna say that none of your code actually gets uploaded, only the tests get uploaded. So the tests and what they're doing, those get uploaded, but the actual code, none of that gets uploaded to testsprite.com. So you won't leak any of your proprietary information. But here we have recent created tests. We have Dreamsaver and we can see that it's passing only one out of 18 on the front end. Let's see what that actually is by clicking on the creation name. So inside here, we can see that we have a few different tests. We can see we have a landing page, dream submission and seamless signup test. We have a user authentication via Superbase OAuth, dream recording with detailed fields, dream recording form validation errors, all of these aired, what passed? Performance, landing page load under one second. Well, that's, that's, that's comforting. And if we click on any one of these tests, we can open it up and see exactly what happened in the test. So we get like a little preview. I'm guessing it's using like Selenium or something like that to actually record a browser, probably using Playwright. And it also gives us a little paragraph about what happened. The test cannot proceed because the sign in button leads to a browser error page, blocking authentication and form submission testing. Please fix the navigation issue to enable further testing. We also get a little video here. Let's see what happens. Let's hit this play button and we can see that it is loading and then it clicked on sign in and then it goes to a blank page. We also get a short paragraph about what the test was doing and we can see the code inside of here. What code is it running in order to actually do this test? Okay, so this looks pretty simple. Let's actually see it inside of the application. I'm gonna reload this application and then I'm gonna scroll down. I'm gonna click on the sign in button. And look at that, it does have a DNS problem where it can't actually see that Superbase database. And the reason for that is because these projects are paused. I need to enable them again. Now also these tests are located inside of your project under the test sprite test folder. And inside of here, you can see all of the code for those tests. Also, if you scroll down, you'll get a couple other files. One is an HTML file. And if we open up this in the browser, we actually can see all of the information that we saw inside the dashboard but it's local to your project. So you can see all of the 
potential issues that you have for the tests that were ran. You also get these metrics and it shows all of the total tests for each individual requirement, as well as whether they passed or failed and which ones passed and which ones failed. So I fixed the bug by starting up the Superbase dev database again, and I'm going to ask it to rerun the test so that we can get accurate results. So all I'm asking is, can you rerun the test now? So it looks like we improved from one test passing to a whole three tests passing. And I think the issue is because of our OAuth. Yeah, it looks like our user authentication via Superbase OAuth is kind of faulty. So even my AI agent is asking me, want me to address the Google OAuth test blockage next? I can add a test only email OTP, one time password, slash password login, or configure a non OAuth fallback to unblock most tests. You know what, I'm going to ask it to create a test only email OTP and password login. So I just said create a test only email OTP slash password login and hopefully this resolves it so that we can see our tests finally pass. It looks like it told me it added a test login and I needed to update a few environment flags inside of my env.local file. And in here, I just wanted to make sure when test auth is enabled, the sign-in button still goes to the Google OAuth. Is that correct? Also, I have updated the m.local with, and then I gave it all of the information for that. And it looks like it is updating some of the page. And now I can run the test again. So now I'll just ask it to rerun the tests. What's also kind of neat is on the dashboard inside of testsprite.com, you can actually get a sense of what the status is for each one of these tests. So you can see that these are all running and they're working on being resolved. Okay, so what those tests showed is that the login process still was messed up. So I had to have the AI do a few things in order for it to get it to work. I, I needed to create a seed account, make sure that that worked and also that it could log in. And now the dashboard should be good. So I'm gonna run the test one more time and hopefully, hopefully we get passing tests and the login issue actually resolves itself. Of course, if you do have third party login like this, you're probably going to go through similar issues. You'll want to create like a backdoor or test account only for testing. Make sure you only do it for testing and allow these tests to be able to be ran. Otherwise, you'll just get stopped just like I did. So let me do this one more time and ask it to rerun the tests. And now that we have real results, we can see that we have 18 total and five are passing and 13 are failed which means we still have issues. And all we really need to do is just ask AI to resolve these problems. So I'm just going to say, can you fix the failures that we are getting? So it looks like it's attempted to fix some of the issues. Here it's saying that it fixed uh, the dreams form, enabled immediate validation and focus on errors and satisfying validation tests. Um, tag saving, that was causing some failures. Uh, and then it added some redirects. And then it's asking me to uh, do some more changes for the failures that we have, like uh, test login flakiness, uh, insights unauthorized, and then Stripe checkout unauthorized, which some of these I'm not too worried about, things like the Stripe checkout unauthorized. This is probably going to require some manual testing anyways to make sure that Stripe is working properly. So I'm gonna ask it to continue fixing all of the issues. And now that it's finished with the fixes, I'm going to restart the dev server and run the tests again. So let's quickly just check out the issues that we're facing. I noticed that we now are up to six passing tests out of 18, and some of these failures I think aren't that important to me. Basically, a couple of them are user authentication errors. So here we have user authentication via Superbase, and then we have dream recording with detailed fields. Now this one is important. It looks like what's happening is we go to create a new dream, and then when we fill stuff out and then put tags and hit save dream, for some reason it fails. So that's obviously a piece that we want to fix, but let's also look at some of the other ones. Here we have uh, AI insight generation for eligible users. So it looks like what it's trying to do is when it is generating the insight, it gives us a fail to generate insight unauthorized. And I think that's because our actual user is set to not have full capabilities to do those insights. Instead, I need to set that in the database. Now I will say our application, it had a lot of bugs. Like we vibe coded it. We didn't really test a whole lot. We just made sure that minimal functionality worked. And that's pretty evident through these tests that we're creating. So realistically, what you can do is you can continue to go through this cycle of feeding in new tests, running new tests, making sure that they run properly. Some of them might not check out what the 
those errors are and then put those errors through the AI agents and make them do whatever they need to do to fix those problems. Fortunately, with Test Sprite, as we keep updating our code and running these tests, we'll eventually get a passing grade. But if you're like me and with Dream Saver, <laughs> there's just so many bugs, there's so many things to fix, it's gonna take a while to iterate through all of the test fixes. But with the detailed explanations inside of Test Sprite for any of the failures, as well as the passes, you can get an idea of what potentially is wrong. It's nice to have these little paragraphs here that tell you exactly what went down. Also, it gives you some information about what got put into the console log. So with that, hopefully you'll have an easier time fixing all of the errors within your application. So in conclusion, vibe coding can be pretty buggy, especially when you're working with these agents. So to alleviate that, Test Sprite comes in and it uses all of these tests to kind of help us deliver features faster. So if you want to check it out, the affiliate link is in the description and thank you to Test Sprite for supporting the channel. And with that, that is how you can test buggy vibe coded apps using Test Sprite.